last week of November, we featured the following on House and Home tonight. A quick chicken bagger tip with Jacob Ilave, the winner of Vocal Fusion. A chat on money and budgeting in the family. Bank South Pacific with the November update. Brian Bell on this week's product features. And we check out one of the hotspots in town. Good evening viewers, I'm Nicole Jone and thank you for joining me. Starting tonight on House and Home, we will be featuring a segment called Home Habits. Home Habits is about anything that we do at home without giving much thought or planning to that particular activity. It can either be playing around the house, going for a drive, skateboarding if that's what we do, or cooking up a delicious meal with leftovers in the fridge. Here is Jacob Ilave, the winner for Vocal Fusion, giving us an idea about one of his home habits. Good evening and welcome to this segment called Home Habits. Here on Home Habits we like to cover random habits that you do in and around your home, be it in the kitchen, living room or in the garden. Tonight on Home Habits though, we'll be doing one of my personal favourite habits and that is preparing um, a simple meal from things you can find in the fridge and cupboards. So tonight we'll be doing a simple chicken burger recipe. Now for this, like I said, besides the chicken and maybe some of the marinade, everything else you'll be able to find in and around your fridge. To start off, you need some nice pieces of chicken breast. I use this personally because um, it's a bit healthier, less fat, plus it's got, got a lot of good meat on it. So what you have to do first is marinate your chicken. All right? So you can use uh, soy sauce or anything, but personally I like using oyster sauce. Um, not only does it help with the colouring, but yeah, it adds that just the right bit of saltiness and makes it taste great. So you add this oyster sauce to your chicken. And you just mix that around lightly, making sure that you cook the outside of the chicken nice and evenly with the oyster sauce. Alright, that shouldn't take too long. Now after you put this on, you're going to have to leave it marinate for about 2 minutes, or even longer if you want a bit more of the flavour to sink in. So, while that's marinating, you can just put that on the side and start working on the other stuff that you can put in the burger. Now, the beauty about this recipe is that you can use pretty much anything you want to, depending on what you want to eat. Usually when you look around the fridge, you can find some of the, these basic ingredients to help you out. So, in my burger, personally, I like onions, um, a bit of tomato, maybe some fresh cucumber, and uh, some nice uh, garden uh, lettuce leaves, and salad, etc. So, while that's marinating, um, you can grab a cucumber. Oh, small tip with cucumbers. The side with the, um, with the stalk is, if you just chop it off and then rub it for a minute or two, you end up sapping it and getting rid of all of that sticky sap that would otherwise make the cucumber taste that little bit, that extra bit bitter. So after sapping it, maybe you should see some of the white sap coming out. Alright, once that's done, all we got to do is just chuck that on the side, scrape off the sap. And then just chop up your cucumber. Like I said, I like cucumber in it, but you can put anything, um, anything that you want in it. Any forms of greens, you can grate up some carrot. Right. So now I've chopped my cucumber. You can use other ingredients. Um, you'll need, of course, some buns or bread to use in this. Uh, I like some fresh onion. You can uh, fry it a bit if you want. But personally, I like it raw. And then for the actual fill of the burger, then you can have some some nice uh, sauce of some sort. I like Caesar salad dressing, so I'm gonna put that in mine, along with some cheese. Great. So by about now, chicken's been marinating for about two minutes. So you can see uh, when it gets nicely coated. So what to do? Um, the best way to cook it, one of the healthiest ways, is to chuck it in the grill. That way um, you're not using as much oil and fat like for when you're frying and stuff like that. So you can just pop in just a little knob of butter just to make sure that the chicken itself doesn't grip too much to the tray. So chuck that on your baking tray. Avoid using knives on the tray itself, otherwise you're going to end up scratching your nice um, greaseproof tray and stuff will just end up sticking like crazy. So just put a bit of butter down. Then you to put your chicken. That's done, you just pop your chicken into your baking tray. So once the chicken is in your tray, you pop it into your oven. Now usually you preheat the oven before you start marinating your chicken. Um, usually around 200 degrees Celsius is the ideal temperature to release bad boys. So you are gonna just pop it in. Let's see what 
And now that's in there cooking, you'll know it's done when the chicken turns slightly golden brown. No real time for that, um, you just have to keep your eyes on it, I guess. And then while that's happening, you can keep preparing the rest of your filling, either chopping the rest of your vegetables, washing your lettuce, um, and preparing other stuff. So by about now, our chicken's been sitting in the oven for about 20 minutes to half an hour. So when that's done, like I said, by constantly checking on it, you can see when it's golden brown and then when it's ready. So we'll just check it out, check it, and let's see how it's doing. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Oh, that's gorgeous. Let's just check this out. Pop that off. And look at that, ladies and gentlemen, golden brown perfection. So the next thing you gotta do is, um, well, of course, it's just burning hot, searing hot, because it just comes straight up. But just check it on um, your chopping board to cool for a bit. And when it's cooling, then um, we'll be able to chop it up because you can't really do the burning with, with a whole piece of meat like that. Okay. All right, so we're done with our good friend the baking tray. We can just put that on the side. All right, now while your chicken is cooling, you can work on your buns next. Um, so we got these nice round burger buns with sesame seeds on top. I love big sesame seeds. Just a quick slice through the middle. And it's up to you, um, preferring what choices you have, but I just like to whack a bit of butter on, just to add a bit of so the burger's not so dry. So just butter up. So after you've buttered your buns, then it's about ready to be served, which is a fun bit. Okay, so you serve your plate. Alright, put your bun down. And um, usually you like to start with the chicken first, um, at the bottom of the base. So, you ready? Just grab your knife and fork. And you can just slice it up. Oh, look at that. Perfection. So, you don't actually really need all that much chicken for one burger. Um, just cut as much as you need. Of course, some of you meatheads would like to stuff it, absolutely stuff it with the chicken. But make sure that the chicken's in nice small enough pieces so that you don't end up biting it and then end up stuck in a mouthful of chicken and not know what to do. Alright, so once we cut just about the right amount of pieces of chicken. Oh, yes, we got cheese. I'll whack the layer of cheese down because it's nice and flat. Let's so the cheese down. And the beauty about putting the cheese down right below your hot burger. Uh, uh, below your hot chicken, excuse me, is that because of the heat, it's going to melt beautifully. Alright, so when you're done, just pop the pieces of chicken on. Like so. And of course, with some of those goody, uh, the, the juices from your baked um, chicken, what you can do is uh, chuck that in as well. Okay, so after you put on your chicken, like I said, it's your choice. You can absolutely eat some however you want to, paint a picture, whatever. But what I'm going to do next is pop on some of my favorite Caesar salad dressing. So just pop that on top of the chicken. It also helps sort of stick everything together. Okay, once that's done, I'll just chuck on some cucumbers. And that's the best thing, no rules. Make it however you want to. A couple of rings of onion. And then top it all off with some nice, crispy, green garden lettuce. You can use a skewer to try and stick it all together, but personally I just like to try and whack the bun on top. Press it down. So now that all the hard work is done, now comes the fun part, the good part that you've been waiting for all night, actually eating the burger. So we can clear everything else to the side. And of course, if you grill enough chicken, um, you can make it for, you make another one for yourself, or make enough for the whole family. But others, there you have it, a very simple, easy chicken burger that you can make with absolutely anything in the fridge, and exactly how you want it, no rules. So with that, thanks for watching A Home Habits, and I'm going to dig into this. What a great idea to use for a lovely chicken burger at home. If you're arriving home late from work, check your refrigerator for leftovers and see what you can come up with. We'll take a quick break and coming up in House and Home, there is more to watch.
Thanks for tuning in to House and Home. This is a great show in which we help you in managing your lives at home. If you have not been checking your calendars, we actually have 29 days left, which is about a month before the 25th of December. And yes, you may be shocked because the days are running first. Tonight we have a family segment on money and budgeting. And as we approach the festive season, due to our busy schedules, we tend to forget how much we are spending. I had a chat earlier on with Lee and Jarari about how we as a family should have some basic budgeting tips. Thanks for joining me on the money and budgeting segment for families at home. Well, tonight, as you know, it's the 25th of November and we have approximately 29 days which is about a month before we hit Christmas and yes that's the festive period and most of us don't stick to budgets. I thought for this period we could discuss some budgeting tips and how we should learn and manage because usually after the festive season everyone doesn't have much on hand and you know we start complaining. Tonight we have the lovely Lee and Jorari on the show and we'll be discussing how she manages her budgeting system. Liam, thank you for joining me on this show. Thank you for having me. Now, budgeting system, do you have anything oh planned for this weekend? No, I don't. I really don't. Uh, <laughs> okay, well, I've done a bit of research and I came up with 10 different budgeting tips mm -hmm. and I wanted to go through it with you yeah. and see what your response is. Sure. So the first one, do you know why you're budgeting? Um, I, I don't budget. I know I should budget, but yeah, I do um, know why we budget. It's to save money to, um, you know, just to see what is needed, you know, how how we can use our money. Mm. So you know that, but you don't actually know. I don't know. do it, no. Mm. Just sad. Okay, <laughs> so, well, the reason for budgeting is to help you spend less mm -hmm. than you usually do. And the next one, do you have a specific, like, long-term or concrete goal when it comes to, when it comes to budgeting? Like, um, yearly, like a uh, Maybe year? for a year, do a you years? know? Yes. Um, no, not really. Not really. <laughs> yeah, I know. This is really very bad. I know. This is it's so really interesting. Bad. <laughs> you know how sometimes you see people and you'll be like, yes, you yep. have a really good budget yep. system. Yeah, yeah. It's good to know. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and do you know actually, like, you don't need to tell me how much you earn, but mm -hmm. from how much you earn, you actually know how much you earn. And do you have any ideas how you manage that? Um, I do know how much I earn. I'm not going to say it on national TV, but um, it's. I think it's important for everyone to know how much they earn, just so they can not only budget, but know you know whether or not their company that's employing them or the government is not ripping them off or anything like that. Um, fortnightly, I do have plans, you know, for that. So my my plans um, when I budget is mostly short term, not so much long term, which you know it's is bad because I should be um, budgeting for long term. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. um, so with what you mm -hmm. earn, I'm sorry to really pry on your personal no financial uh, <laughs> income, yeah. with what you earn, do you, have you been setting aside things for Christmas, like a bit of money for Christmas? Um, see, I should be, but as I said again, I don't, because I'm just a spare of the moment spontaneous person, so <laughs> whenever money comes, I just like spend foolishly, foolishly which is the wrong thing to do by the way <laughs> well thank you thank you for like, being honest with us on the show uh when it comes to you spending do you actually have like a data or a little notebook that you keep to find out how much you're spending no 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 maybe that's something that you need to do yeah i know i mean i mean for everyone out there i am literally the example of what not to do um when you're trying to budget <laughs> yeah. thank you yes. All right. uh, on that note like i'm asking you this question because i usually do that i have my notebook in which um why i actually had to ask you this question is because mm -hmm. i attended a budgeting course and it was just for basic stuff at yeah. home and they said to keep a notebook of my expenditure of every day items so yeah. every, everyday shopping and I did but there are times that I forget mm -hmm. to keep the list I wanted to check just to make sure that I'm not the only one in this world but thank yeah. you for letting me know <laughs> about that uh, with your savings and accounts um, we're just gonna jump into the banking system yeah is there some do you have an online banking system that you do 
Um, not in this country. I used to have it when I was living overseas, but in this country, I mean, just the line, the process, you know, you go through, it takes months, practically months to, you know, just get a single account open or your card, you know. So, no, I, I don't have an online banking, you know, account here in Papua okay. New Guinea. I have one overseas, though. Oh, you do? Okay. Yeah. That's good because uh, with the online banking, some of you viewers may have it, you can actually, uh, you may have different accounts and you can actually budget and say if whatever you want to use, you can put it into your transaction account mm -hmm. and you can pull out how much you want to do and yeah. use the transaction account yeah. while your yeah. savings is untouched. Yeah. So, yeah, that's something that we as Papua New Guineans could think about when yeah. it comes to online banking. Um, do you have an idea of how you can do a simple budgeting plan? Um, if after this interview you might be thinking about it. So if I have an idea of how, how to... You, yeah, how to do a simple budget in plan. Um, yeah, just very, um, just very general, you know, general kind of plan, I guess. Yeah. General kind yeah. of plan. Okay, the first tip from this discussion and mm -hmm. chat that we're having about budgeting, the idea is to have a pencil and a notebook mm -hmm. and then just list down the major things that you need to do yep. and take note of what you want to spend and maybe start now, say, 29 days left before Christmas, so okay. maybe 20 kina or 50 kina aside because I'm sure we won't be buying like one present for one particular person mm -hmm. will be going on. So just do a list of that. With so this is for your Christmas budget? Yeah, this okay. is for your Christmas mm -hmm. budget. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thanks for correcting me on yeah. that. No it worries. is for your Christmas budget. Mm -hmm. We're going to do a simple, just to give an example to mm -hmm. our viewers on how to do a simple budget and this is planning for Christmas. Mm -hmm. So the first tip for tonight that you can have is have a notebook and have a pencil and list down what you're going to, how much you're going to spend and what you want to buy for this season. Okay. And then from that mm -hmm. go to how much you're earning mm -hmm. and see how much you can put aside for budgeting or for buying stuff for Christmas. Okay. So. If we're looking, if it's just one month, that, that means that it's like two fortnights before Christmas. And oh, you have to plan that. It's that soon. Oh, you forgot. <laughs> <that>. <laughs> no, <I> forgot. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so it's uh, two fortnights. Mm -hmm. And if you need to plan for Christmas, mm -hmm. then say maybe for the first fortnight, put 100 aside. Mm -hmm. And then the second fortnight, put another 100 aside. Yeah. Maybe there'd be 200 kina for you to do your shopping. Okay. But the other thing, the other tip is that you have to stick to your Budget. budget. So if yeah. you say 200, you See, have to stick to that, it. That, that's where I have my problem, you know. I can have a budget, but whether I stick to that yes. is another thing, and I'm sure it affects a lot of okay. viewers as well. Yeah. All right. So how can we stick to that budget? Stick to the budget. One of the tips that I got um, is, you know how when you have your transaction cards, mm -hmm. or with BSP we have the Save card. Mm -hmm. When we go shopping, we say, okay, 200 kina is the budget for today. Yeah. But when you have a card, you go and you swipe mm. and you swipe and you go over um, 200. Yeah. The easy way is you can use your Save card, your BSP card, and you can just withdraw 200 in cash. Mm -hmm. so, and then when you get the 200 kina, you can go and then according to the list that you have on your notebook, you buy according to that. So that every time when you have cash on hand, you'll be afraid not to spend overdo it mm, you can okay. not overdo it so yeah. when it comes and you'll be like okay this is how much mm. so with cash it's really easy yeah. to maintain and try hide your Save card just yeah. for that okay. little period <laughs> all right okay. yeah so that's mm -hmm. the tip I can give for tonight okay I am the one asking you questions but yeah. before we leave do you have any questions for me to um, help you with I don't know I think it's just you know with this time um, Christmas approaching and there's just marketing campaign like companies are going crazy you know in retails and all that going crazy with their marketing and everything is bright and colorful and big and bold and so like I think you know it really um, gets to us the consumers we see something and we have to have it even though we don't need it but we have to have it so what, yeah, are, what yeah. you're saying I have a brochure here oh, it's a Brianville Home Center brochure and I'm tempted I saw these exactly. headphones that I would like to <laughs> yeah. get yeah. So, yeah so what was the question? so yeah they're basically like you know as it says they're the hottest deals ever you know there's like saving you know save this amount to get this you know that's what I mean so like how can we stick to that budget while you know 
out there. Yeah, while out there with all this temptation thrown at us. <laughs> all right. That's a good question, though. Uh, many of us say that, oh, we, c we are able to manage it. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, temptation is always there. Mm -hmm. The only thing we as a person need to do is learn to discipline our shopping mm -hmm. skills. Because there are times when we just get tempted and we're like, it's hot, we're going to save. And yes, it's really good. Sometimes the things are like, so cheap you want to get them mm -hmm. on the spot the good thing like with brand bell they have all these catalogs that they give out so what you can do is go through the catalog take a look at it list down all that you want and get your money according to mm -hmm. how much it is how much it costs mm -hmm. and then using that exact money when you get out there you know what you want to get mm -hmm. but if you just go like oh let's just go and check out yeah. what's at brian bell that's when you don't think and you spend but brian bell actually does a good thing by giving this catalog so what you can do is get out the catalogs and the prices are next to it so you just list down how much you want to spend for the day and how, what you want to buy okay. and then that's how you can uh, learn to discipline your spending yeah. thank you that's yes something that i really need thank you so very you're okay with that yes sir. very informative thank you so much <laughs> good okay viewers thank you so much for listening to us chat and laugh and now we know that some of us do actually don't quite have a budgeting plan and i actually to be honest i don't have a christmas budgeting plan so i have to do that straight up uh, right after this with Maybe not with Leanne, but by myself. <laughs> so thank you, Leanne, once again. No and worries. we'll see you on the next show. Welcome back. I'm Nicole, your host on House and Home. The BSP PNG Games is continuing this week and I'd like to say congratulations to all our PNG athletes in Lei who are winning gold medals, silver medals and bronze medals. With this, we join Rosemary Maiwe for this month of November's Bank South Pacific update. BSP FPOS, now in more locations to make your purchases even easier. Use BSP FPOS to save you carrying cash around. But if you need some cash, you can always get it using your Kundu card at one of thousands of BSP FPOS merchants across the country. Wherever you are, there is a BSP FPOS facility nearby, so you can access your money anytime. While travelling, use BSP FPOS to pay for airfares, hotels and meals. Because BSP FPOS is the smarter way to pay. Good evening viewers and welcome to another BSP segment. We begin our segment by taking you through to one of our products called the Smart Business Package. BSP's Smart Business product offers a bundle of products for small business owners or SME. Jinia Siaguru, who owns a small catering company called Tapioca Delight, she tells a story of how she manages her business funds through the Smart Business account and more recently applied for a smart business loan to purchase a semi-commercial oven and a chiller to improve business production. Genius small home business has grown with the help of a smart business loan. So we are a locally owned cake business. We supply cakes, cupcakes, we have trifles, uh, all kinds of desserts we, we can do. And apart from that, we also do small catering, things like sandwiches, fruits, uh, all kinds of stuff for small functions. This business started off as a hobby, just baking cakes at home. And we, I started selling them at work in January of 2012. On average, we have 10 orders a day. That's the big orders usually come on Fridays and throughout the weekend. Throughout the week, we get orders from individuals and other, other companies too that, that have birthdays and also who require catering. When I started this, it was really just a hobby and I used our, our kitchen oven, kitchen fridge, and then thanks to the, the promotions that I was doing via Facebook and my Tapioca Delight Facebook page, things, the orders just increased. I, I couldn't keep up with the demand at the rates we were going. So we approached BSP for a loan. 
which would help us to buy equipment that could cater for the demand. And with, with the loan that we got, it helped us to purchase an oven. And then we can store up to five cakes in, in the big fridge that we've also purchased. So it's, the loan has really helped us to, to keep up with the demand that's coming for this business and, and to help us grow our business as well. BSP has really helped us along the way. We've secured a loan with the bank and we've successfully been able to pay it off through our cake business. That was one of our successful smart business customer. Now moving on, Papua New Guinea has hosted a lot of significant international events this year. And one of these important events that will be happening at the end of November from the 28th to the 30th here in the nation's capital is the second Melanesian Spearhead Group Trade and Investment Roadshow and Trade Fair. This event will create an ideal opportunity for all businesses, including those who had and or are currently trading within the MSG markets to maintain or enhance their trading. And those who are willing or have the potential to break borders to actually take part in trade and investment of goods and services within the MSG sub-region. With the concept of public-private partnership to stage this event, BSP has come on board as a bronze sponsor to support this significant regional event with 100,000 Kina sponsorship. A presentation of this sponsorship was made by the BSP Deputy General Manager for Retail, Kili Tambua, to the Minister for Trade, Commerce and Industry, Honorable Richard Maru, last week. This is the first time the government has opened up these bilateral trade development opportunities to the business community in PNG, of which BSP is very proud to support. Another avenue in promoting and marketing our beautiful country is through various publications. BSP is proud to be part of The Report, Papua New Guinea 2014, a publication by the Oxford Business Group as it gives an in-depth analysis of the country. Oxford Business Group is a global publishing research and consultancy firm which publishes economic intelligence on the markets around the world. BSP Deputy CEO and Chief Financial Officer Johnson Kahlo stated during the launch of the report Papua New Guinea 2014 that for a long time we've known that PNG as a country and as an emerging economy in the Pacific we needed to do a little bit more work in terms of marketing itself to the outside world and BSP thinks this is one of the avenues we can do it. The mining and petroleum sector in Papua New Guinea continues to be a major driving force in the growth of PNG's economy. Given the increasing activity in this sector, access to financial services is once crucial aspect in ensuring these projects succeed. The Papua New Guinea Mining and Petroleum Conference provides an avenue for industry stakeholders to come together to discuss ways developments within this sector. And as a leading financial institution in PNG, BSP is pleased to be on board as one of the major sponsors for the 13th PNG Mining and Petroleum Investment Conference happening early next month in Sydney. BSP will also be setting up a trade booth to showcase a wide range of banking solutions to conference delegates. So come down to booth number one when you're in Sydney and find out more on how BSP can meet your financial needs. Now moving into our donation, this month BSP donated 10,000 kina towards the YWAM Gala Night to raise funds to purchase a new medical vessel replacing the aging Pacific Link with the new MV Amari. As PNG's leading bank, BSB is proud to be financially assisting YWAM in its work to reach people in the isolated areas of the country in delivering essential health care and training in coastal communities. Also this month, the PNG Red Cross Society received 5,000 kina donation from BSB to help further and maintain their life-saving programs throughout the country. 
Into our community project for this month, students at Vanima Primary School are now using our new renovated basketball and volleyball courts through the Vanimo Community Project. Up in the Highlands, the Goruka branch team renovated the grandstand at Goruka Rugby League Field in Lopi. And here in NCD, the Port Mosby branch team renovated three basketball courts at the Bomana de La Salle Secondary School outside Port Mosby. We now have only nine community projects to be completed out of the 37 to be rolled out this year. That concludes our BSP updates for this month. But before I go, I would like to thank Nishan Beauty for doing my hair. Until then, we'll see you next time. Enjoy your viewing and good night. BSP FPOS, now in more locations to make your purchases even easier. Use BSP FPOS to save you carrying cash around. But if you need some cash, you can always get it using your Kundu card at one of thousands of BSP FPOS merchants across the country. Wherever you are, there is a BSP FPOS facility nearby, so you can access your money anytime. While travelling, use BSP FPOS to pay for airfares, hotels and meals. Because BSP FPOS is the smarter way to pay. Thank you, Rosemary. And it is good to hear that with the help from Bank South Pacific's Smart Business Package, Miss Sia Guru is doing well. Congratulations, Jinia. You're a lovely role model for our beautiful young ladies out there who would like to follow in your footsteps. We'll head out for a quick break and don't forget these hips to watch on House and Home. Brianville has featured a variety of quality products ever since the first segment on House and Home. Every week, Brianville keeps us informed of their sales, promotions, and when they have new stocks in the shops nationwide. Tonight, we join Jane at Brianville Home Center in Gordons. Hey, hey, Mr. B. Hi, I'm Jane Takilala, and welcome to the Brianville segment. The month of November is an important month in the PNG calendar with the six PNG games currently happening in Lay. There is also the booming rate of the informal sector for Lay residents providing a service for their guests. That's why we at Bell care and make shopping easier for you by covering a wide range of quality sporting to outdoor accessories you need for your team. For this segment, I will feature the common range of insulated coolers. These essential products are convenient for sporting activities, road trips and gatherings. They are portable, durable and made to last. The insulation holds the cold temperature while an anti-microbial adaptive helps resist the growth of odor, causing bacteria on or in the cooler. The coolers also feature a UV inhibitor that prevents yellowing so it stays looking good year after year. The best thing about these products is that they don't depend upon compressors or any source of energy to work. Our first products are these white colored tough marine SPs. They're made to last and are available in different sizes to suit various lifestyles. They feature antimicrobial protection on the liner and cutting board to resist odor, mold, and mildew, which prolongs the freshness of your food. Perfect for day trips. Integrated cutting board, which stays in place when cutting and can be stored away when not in use. This is perfect for fishing trips and outdoor gatherings like barbecues and picnics by a riverside. Catch-free rubber latches, which helps ensure the lid is secured if the cooler rolls or tumbles. So you don't have to worry if you're taking this product on off-road trips. Dill drains for easy draining with standard hose, tread and thick wall. Scratch resistant texture which keeps scuffs and scrapes to a minimum. UV inhibitor which protects the product from the sun's damaging rays. Perfect for an outdoor activity where you spend a lot of your time out in the sun. Extended ice retention with its airflow barrier. It combines to lock in the cold and keep your ice lasting for as long as you want. Perfect product for a sports team and for the small businessmen providing a service selling cold drinks at sports grounds and other events. When you need a cooler on wheels with extraordinary ice retention for those hot sticky days, choose a Coleman Extreme, which brings us to our second line of products. 
They are available in different sizes with the biggest size of 95 liters which can accommodate up to 5 cartons of drinks to keep you hydrated. They feature four stay put beverage holder to keep the drinks closer to you, superior cold retention holding ice for up to 5 days. So if you're going out for camping, you're sure to come back with the ice you went out with. Heat resistant and rust proof. Comfortable tow handle for one man operation and two way handles for easy lifting and transporting. Two large wheels for easy pulling, even on rough terrain, which is suitable to take anywhere. These Coleman Extreme Wheeled Coolers are also available in a combo pack, which includes a 4.7 litre cooler which you can store medication or something that you want separated from the rest of your goods and a 1.2 litre jar these items can be purchased separately as well our final product features this 30 can hybrid cooler with head liner keep everything cold on the sports wheel with this product it's easy with its side handles for more control and adjustable padded shoulder strap for carrying comfort it has pockets and a buggy on top making packing up extra food Next and gear simple. Apart from the featured products, we have a wide selection of the Coleman insulated coolers to choose from. With the festive season and holidays around the corner, these are must have products. Before I wrap up, just a quick reminder that Brian Belt's family Christmas giveaway promotions have started and will run till the 27th of December. There are a total of 70 prizes of Star Vision LED televisions to be given away weekly. While the major prize were 25,000 Kina family packages and three lots of consolation prizes worth 10,000 Kina each will be drawn on the 10th of January next year. Therefore, if you have filled out one of these forms, then have a look at your screen now for our fifth weekly draw winners. You've got approximately four weeks left before the promotion ends, so start shopping now for your chance to win. Now you know you can tend to us simply because you're backed up by Brian Bell's warranty, service and spare parts. So remember, great products, great prices, that's Brian Bell. Until next time, I'm Jane Tokilala, have a good night. The Coleman Insulated Coolers is a great idea to have this festive season and you would definitely want your drinks to be kept cool if you're heading to the beach. After the break, we have a special for you called Hot Sports in Town. Thanks for staying with me. If you're in new in town or just passing through Port Moresby, we decided to feature certain hot spots in town that you may want to check out. Let's find out more from Jacob. Whether you're looking for somewhere to chill, have a good cup of coffee, or just catch up with friends, there are a number of good hot spots in town. In this segment of House and Home, we feature the best cafes around Moresby, which make coffee just the way you like it. First on our list, Duffy Cafe. Located in the Gordons Industrial Area, Duffy is a luxury fashion store and cafe all in one complex. Duffy was also featured in Business Advantage PNG's website as the hottest destination in Port Moresby for coffee and the catch up. Decorated in style with an outside patio and a canopy for shade, you can sit around and enjoy the sun's warmth. When you enter, the cafe is packed with customers stopping to grab a coffee. You can choose from a variety of delights served to go with your yummy beverage. So I've heard from my family and friends that Duffy offers a fantastic cup of freshly brewed coffee and a wide range of culinary delights. I'm here to try a cup on. Waitress.
Thank you very much. So whether you're in town, passing through, or just hanging around, check out Coffee at Duffy's and indulge yourself. And that was Jacob indulging himself. I'm sure all you who love your coffee are craving one right now. We'll be showing more hot spots in town. You will just have to watch House and Home every Tuesday to find out what we will feature next. And at a quick break for now, and we'll be right back. show here is a brief highlight of what we covered tonight on house and home jacob ilave on home habits with a quick chicken bagger tip a chat on money and budgeting at home bank south pacific with the november update brian bill showcasing the coleman insulated coolers and jacob again taking us to duffy's which is currently one of the hot spots in town next week we have more on zin and cooking brian bell home habits also this festive season house and home has some specials to show you leading up to christmas day i'm nicole jonah thanks for watching house and home i'll see you next time